Welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year. I hope you have a great year with your family, friends, or alone, however you celebrated. This time, I'm bringing you a video about books in my top five books of 2022. So I usually don't keep track of my books that much. I just like reading whatever I feel like reading at that time. But that's kind of why I'm like two weeks into 2023 and then finally came with a list of books that I wanted to share here with you and hear your thoughts about it because yeah I don't really have bookish friends that I can share my thoughts with so I would like to read in the comments what you thought and yeah so let me show you this is in not particular order actually the order I'm trying to make is like the order I read it so I'm gonna go with what I think is the first book I read in 2022 or one of the first books I should say and that has made my top five and ah, this book so I'm a little late on to the Sarah J Mass world um my husband bought me the whole series for my birthday september 2021 and i started reading the books around october and that took me and i read the whole series like like that so this i read at the very beginning of 2022 i would say around february or march and definitely i get nervous when it comes to reading the last book of a series because it could be a great book or it could be a meh book sometimes it's like oh but uh, luckily i haven't come across series that are that bad but this book it's probably it's a great book but it's one of the most stressful books i ever read in my entire life right so i was this is very thick so as i was reading the book i was like oh my god just get it over with right i was just so stressed about this whole this book but once i was finished with the whole series i was like oh my god the, this was great there is i believe seven books in the series none of them feel like it's too much none of them feel slow all of them have something to add to the story i love them all but the last one was probably the best and i don't want to talk about the story too much because like i said there's seven books and if you're in the middle of a story i don't want to ruin it for you but definitely continue until the end definitely recommend and hopefully this year i get my hands into the famous akator series um that's definitely the goal maybe that's the book or the series i'm gonna ask my husband to buy me for my birthday but yes that's the first one that i wanted to mention in this top five of the year honestly i would have put all the books um but that wouldn't be fun all right and then i read a bunch of stuff you know here and there i think the next thing the next one that i read in the middle of the year is this one book of night by holly black so we all know holly black she's wrote a bunch of books series really good i also need to get my hands into her book series um i believe it's the cruel prince the cruel prince I think that's the one anyways um but yes holly black um it's also because she's also wrote books with cassandra claire which was um the magisterium right i read all of those books those are more like for kids but i still love them i still read them all and i don't know i really love them uh but yes this one is about shadows so it's in a world where you can use your shadow or your shadow has life and you can use it to your advantage you can manipulate it and use it use your shadow as an extension of yourself so i thought the story or that kind of storyline is very interesting i never seen it before personally so i was very excited for this book i feel like it was slightly slow at the very beginning but i mean i would say most books are a little slow especially when it comes to fantasy because you have to build the world right so it gets a little ah uh, but in the end it makes it all makes sense i really like this book when i finished reading it i was like i liked the book i don't know if i loved it 
but I realized after months of reading that I was thinking about this book and I'm like, oh my God, nothing to think about it. It was really good. Not that I had a bad reading year or anything like that. I just really enjoyed this book. And the ending, it's one of those bitchy endings where it, anything could happen. Like literally anything could happen after that ending. I've heard or I read some rumors that this might actually not be a standalone. I'm kind of 50-50 when it comes to that. I mean, it's kind of those endings where, like I said, anything could happen type of ending. Um, but at the same time, I do want to see a part two. But at the same time, I don't want the part two to ruin the first book. So it's just a whole confusion of emotions. I don't even know if my English was right, but you get what I'm saying. So that was um, another book that made it to the top five, especially because I kept thinking about it um, the rest of the year after I read it. And then let me go and try to go in order here. Uh, Rick Riordan. So I don't remember if this came out with 2022 or 2021. I feel like Rick Riordan usually comes out with his books on around September. So something tells me that it was out in 2021. But it, nonetheless, I read it last year during the summertime. Anything Rick Riordan writes, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to read it. And most likely, I'm going to love it like I love this one. Um, just FYI, Barnes & Noble, I hate the stickers. I can't take it off. I don't want to ruin my book. But anyways. <laughs> so uh, this, is, this is a standalone. Uh, this, is, this follows the story of Anna Dakar. I Hope that's how it's pronounced and she goes to a school like harry potter style they even mention it on the book and they have four houses each house has its own specialty and the story starts where uh she's a freshman so all the freshman class has to go on a trial for the weekend and some a tragedy happens something crazy happens and that's where the story starts so it's kind of like a adventure book, just like the Percy Jackson book is adventures. Obviously nothing related to Percy Jackson, um, but I definitely love the storyline. There's zero romance in this story, which is totally fine. I like the humor that Rick Riordan puts into his books. That just makes them so fun. And yeah, so Daughter of the Deep is, a, I don't even know if I mentioned the name of the book. Um, but yeah, I read it in like three days, honestly, not even that. It's just a quick read. Um, the ending, it's, it's standalone. It's a good ending in my opinion. I don't think we need more from this book, but uh, kind of makes me feel that I want to cross over. Like Percy had with, um, oh, I forgot his name, Carter from the Kane Chronicles. And, um, you know, those kind of crossovers will be fun to have. But yeah, that's all. I mean, I don't expect any more from this storyline. But I definitely recommend. I love it. Yeah. And then uh, coming here to the last two books. This is A Flicker in the Dark. So, so far I've made a lot of, uh, not a lot, a couple book related videos here on my youtube channel and i feel like in all of them i've shown book of the month books but as you can see i do read outside of book of the month uh but here we have another book of the month book i feel like i just said book a million times in the last 30 seconds but anyway a flicker in the dark by stacy willingham so this is a thriller um, like I mentioned before, I've got into thrillers uh, the last year or year and a half, and it was thanks to Book of the Month uh, or the subscription um, that I got into this kind of story. So Flicker in the Dark is about a girl, what's her name? Chloe. It's about Chloe. Um, so when she was little, her dad was um, arrested for uh, killing people or he was accused of killing girls. Um, and then 20 years later, now Chloe is a psychologist and she treats teenagers, but something starts to happen again. Uh, and she thinks it's very similar to what happened 20 years ago. And that's the whole mystery of the book. And then, you know, it's a standalone novel. You get to the conclusion. Um, I like 
when I don't know what's gonna happen in thriller books because sometimes you get a feeling, right? You get a feeling that, oh, maybe this is what's gonna happen in the end. I like when I don't feel that, like when I don't know what's gonna happen. And the book takes you pretty much until the end, it makes you think that you know what's happening, but in the end it's like, oh, wait a minute. And like two pages before it actually happens, you're like, wait a minute, I don't think that's gonna happen at all. <laughs> So yes, yeah, that's the kind of book I really like, um, especially when it comes to thrillers. And A Flicker in the Dark is a really good one. It is dark, as the title says. Um, it is a thriller, so there's some trauma, of course, in the book. But um, definitely recommend. It's a good thriller. Uh, it's a quick read. I don't remember how long it took me. Sometimes a book can take me two days, and sometimes it can take me two months. I re It really depends. It's not the book's fault. It's more so my mood. But yes. And last but not least, all my top five, I had to, had to add Love on the Brain. So if you saw my video before, you know how much I love this book. This book made me get more rom-com books uh, and I am obsessed with them. But this is by Ali Hazelwood. Love on the Brain is about, well, this girl, let me see if I remember. Um, oh yeah, so she is a scientist and now she has a new project at NASA with this guy who at first obviously they don't like each other or she thinks that he doesn't like her and then the story goes from there. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of mystery because something is happening in the back end. It's not just romance, uh, but it's hilarious. It's funny. I really hope this author comes with a two books at least a year because she's really good um it gives me that same feeling that rick byorden books give me it's kind of weird because they're completely two different genres but that's it makes me feel excited and i want to know what's gonna happen next so this is that type of book so yeah those are my top five so of course sarah j mass had to be in this one since i started reading her and then holy black i need to read her more big by Orden, i literally have all the books um that he has written let me know if you want to see my collection because they are in japanese some of them are in spanish and once i arrived to the united states of course i started getting them in english so you know an interesting collection that i have and of course these two books um don't be surprised to see a lot more books from book of the month because that's what i like and of course, honorary mentions, <laughs> these were just hilarious. I read them at the very end of the year and I had to add them here just because, um, I don't know, they were so funny. Like if you're having like a slow reading month or something like that and you don't mind reading rom-coms, <laughs> these are hilarious and they're very quick reads in my opinion. But yes, honorary mentions, very quick mention by the way. Uh, and then let me show you what I got this month on my book of the month. So, first, I actually got socks, right? It says, not now, I'm reading. Um, I got my socks because I completed the challenge for the year. So there's a challenge throughout the year to read a certain amount of books. Some of them had to be like debut novels, some of them 400 more pages. And there's like three different challenges and I completed it. And of course, you get your usual um, bookmark. Girls, you, <laughs> girls just want to have books. It says this one. And then these are the ch this is the note saying how I completed my challenge. And that's why I have my socks. And then, of course, I had to get like a romance book. Uh, it's Lunar Love. I honestly, when I, when I get my books, I forget what they are all about. I do read what, you know, all the books that they have available for the month. I read the synopsis or what it is about and that's how I choose them but then by the time I get them I'm like oh, what is this about so I'm thinking I thought this was like a love romance comedy type of story so that's why I got it but I'll let you know what I think of it and then lastly my current read I just wanted to quickly share it I have started a new series The Black Witch um I read it with it does have a cover somewhere in my house but I read read the book without it i'm halfway through i would say i don't know if you can see here um and yes i'm using a book of the month 
bookmark but um yes the funny story about this is that last year for my birthday so the sarah j mass books my husband got it for me two years ago in 2021 so in 2022 for my birthday my husband just went into barnes and noble went to the fantasy section and so a purple cover because purple is my favorite color and he got it and he got home and that was my <laughs> gift but then when i see the book and i open it it says chronicles and i'm like oh you've got me chronicles so that means it's a series you're gonna have to give me the rest and i was kind of joking but the thing is he got me the fourth book of the series and i'm like okay now you actually have to get me the rest of the books because i need to start it so i got the rest of the books um and this is like sign i didn't know i could get sign books at amazon but that's what happened and yeah that's what i'm reading uh it's the first book i usually don't interrupt the series so i'm gonna read the whole thing so that's what's gonna be in the first two or three months of my year the black witch series and i'll let you know what i think about them but yes that's all i have for this video i hope you like it let me know what you read this past year and what you're planning to read this year definitely definitely the aquator series i want to add them for this year may happen may not i don't know but yeah i'll see you next time Bye. oh by the way i forgot to mention that i'm wearing one of my shirts that i sell it says sun beach and books and it's the middle of winter here in the u.s but it's summer somewhere so yeah i just wanted to mention that thank you for watching now i see you next time bye